Hello, welcome to Show Studios Live panel discussions. Uh, in these discussions, experts from all parts of the industry discuss and debate the most important Fashion Week shows of the season. Uh, today, in the midst of Milan Fashion Week, we're going to be discussing Gucci Spring Summer 2020. If you couldn't tell, I just read that off an auto cue. Uh, everyone, I'll get you to introduce yourself starting at yeah. this end here. My name is Zaina Batchela. I'm a photographer, creative director, and director. Uh, my name is James Brackenbury. I do different things, a lot of hand dyeing stuff, tie dye stuff. I've got my own brand and set up called Stain Shade. Tino Kumal, I'm an artist. Mike Hope, I'm a stylist and consultant. I'm Hannah Hall, and I'm an artist. Awesome, and I'm Finn McTaggart, occasional guest chair at Show Studio. Um, I'm a filmmaker and a musician. Um, I'm very glad to be back. Uh, I haven't done one of these in a while, which is very exciting. And I got the big boy today, Gucci, which is just uh, killing it at the moment. Um, Gucci's a brand that started off with its kind of equestrian roots. It's a, it's a leather goods brand in its kind of DNA. Um, and items like the horse bit loafers, bamboo bag were the kinds of things that propelled it forward. But I think, I think when people think of Gucci and the kind of revival of its status as a kind of it brand, they really think of Tom Ford and what Tom Ford did with it. Um, I would say one name that gets missed out of the kind of official Gucci story is Dapper Dan, who was around just before Tom Ford, who had a lot to do with reviving the kind of um, commercial appeal and desirability of Gucci, among other brands. Um, today we've got Alessandra McKelly. We're going to skip over Frida Giannini because she was a bit boring. Um, and Alessandra McKelly, who is a sort of insider in the brand, has really elevated it to the most extreme levels with his maximalist aesthetic. Um, this guy's doubled Kering's uh, worth. This is a super brand taking the world by storm, and everyone wants a piece of it. Um, so I wanted to know from the panel, I've got five panelists, so a lot of opinions today, which is good. Um, what do we think is behind the success of Alessandro Michelli's particular vision for Gucci? Yeah. You're ready. Go on, Tina. Yeah, no, I was going to say the rap culture's kind of given it like a, it catapulted it. Like when certain artists come through as a recent, um, especially for my culture anyway, like all, all my men and wear Gucci. We've been wearing it even before we knew it was. But um, yeah, I think the rap game just kind of gave it that push and it gave the market more of an open eye to it. Because a lot of these upmarket brands don't really like it when certain rappers wear their stuff and it's like, don't be hot then. Do you know what I mean? If you've got the money, you're going to buy it or well, it's going to get, yeah. That's it. Well, that, I, I guess that's why I brought up Dapper Dan at the beginning is because, um, you know, he was someone who, um, you know, his, his story was one of making things work out of the fact that luxury brands like Gucci would not sell to a black owned business in Harlem. They wouldn't sell to his boutique. So he used to cut up garment bags, he'd get any kind of samples of the fabrics he could, and he really defined the kind of yeah, desirability of Gucci by putting it on his clients who are rappers. Mm -hmm. um, and now we see that today, um, Dapper Dan's actually come into the business um, after a bit of a, uh, a kind of backlash. issue of, of... Yeah, backlash. Yeah, so, after yeah, a backlash yeah, yeah. of um, idea theft, basically. Yeah, mm -hmm. but I just think he was the deconstructing fashion. I mean, we all do it. He deconstructed his shoes and flipped them, maybe put the Nike logo on it. That's nothing to do with that. <laughs> it looks cold. Zoom in on his shoes if you can, innit? <laughs> um, but yeah, shout out for Dan, though. He's hard. You're poised to jump in. <laughs> yeah, um, so I was thinking more so the kind of the success of Gucci has come from the fact that Alessandro Michele has essentially reinvented it. Kind of, he always transports you back to an alternate era, and you can see that there are always kind of nods of different styles that are incorporated. Um, I'm definitely excited to see what the new collection is going to be like. There's obviously been quite a bit of backlash with kind of like cultural appropriation and crossing lines, which is mm -hmm. somewhat not okay, particularly um, autumn, winter 2018, I believe, with the turbans and the blackface turtleneck jumper. 
which was massive. Um, yeah. Dapper Dan obviously then had something to say about that as well, and they've now decided that they've appointed a new chief of diversity, Renee Torado. So hopefully they can kind of bring the brand into a place that is respectful of different cultures, but can still kind of incorporate those kind of tropes of it without being disrespectful. Hmm. Yeah, um, I think... Because he, 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 what was he before? He was head of accessories. He was, yeah. So I think accessories are quite a good gateway to like this maximalization thing. Do you know what I mean? You can, on a smaller scale, you can go a lot crazier and it's a lot more of a, a digestible product because it's not a full, you're not wearing it necessarily. Do you know what I mean? It's a, it can go, you can pair it with, with, with a pretty simple outfit and that can be the talking piece. So I think he's brought, that attitude of either whatever the phrase is, maximization or whatever, from, from the accessory side and brought that into the, the, the ready to wear. And I think people have reacted well. But it, it, that's not to say that that was a guarantee, right? I well, think I mean, was, over 50% of Gucci's sales are on bags. Still on and that, then yeah. about 20% are sneakers. So um, I think that's got a lot to do with the success. Is he's really been able to sell those accessories in the way that he's gone for this completely over-the-top look. Mm. Mike, how do you feel? Yeah, I think that Alessandro has done a good job kind of interpreting these meme pieces, per se, like creating clothing that has the ability to go viral to individual pieces that maybe that piece itself is not going to sell in any huge number, but it's tremendous exposure for the brand. And then you have the entire, this fascination with streetwear that has been going on for so long, kind of since Givenchy, like uh, Tishi stuff, mm -hmm. and uh, it's just been like continuing finding a way to capitalize on that right. and uh, market to young people, market to rap, market to Asia, market to whatever these, mar these markets that exist now that are different from, let's say, the previous customer of Gucci, well, that kind of past Tom Ford, whatever existed then, it was quite stale, honestly. Mm. Yeah. Well, now it's about, there's a lot, if you look on Gucci's Instagram, it's a lot about um, Asian rappers or artists in the pop world in Asia, because this mm -hmm. is a big growing market of middle-class luxury consumers. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And so that's, I think, been a, a big part of its success is it, it markets very well there. And in that it is also quite, um, covered in a way that Tom Ford was certainly not mm -hmm. means it's also open to um, luxury consumers in um, places like Saudi Arabia or yeah. and those types of places. Yeah, in the Middle East. What, what, what do you think of his um, success and why? So I'm quite a big fan in the sense that he's a very good storyteller. He has a lot of different influences and when you deconstruct his garments there are very different pieces brought together to make such a big clash which I think works very very well. I think there's always like a little bit of romance to his work as well, which I really enjoy. But I'm kind of hoping, although I live for like the 70s era, I am hoping there's maybe not just so many boys coming down, skinny white boys in a chunky knit, skinny rimmed glasses. <laughs> I live for it, don't get me wrong. Let's not get sexist. Let's, but... not, let's not do that, let's not do that. But I'm just hoping like, like, I think it's good for a brand to have a thing, for sure, but it's... Yeah. How much longer can you take it? Yeah, How long a, is it coming for? Respect, yeah, respect that kind of thing. Like, where are you going to take that further before it gets well, a bit? I think with with some of what you're mentioning, what you've mentioned about the blackface controversy, there's there's a big issue when a brand sort of revolves around nostalgia in the way that that mm -hmm. Gucci does. This is a brand that's mm -hmm. like, as much as it's about maximalism, I think the core identity of Gucci right now is just nostalgia. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so that becomes really, it becomes a bit of an issue when you know, things were not so great in terms of race relations in a yeah, lot of eras so you're true. referencing. Yeah. Yeah, but, yeah. Um, and Gucci now has the ability to kind of rewrite their narrative. Yeah. Um, I think the problem with that is, if you didn't live through that, when you're looking back, you don't know the pain that was there. Exactly. So sometimes you can see pictures and you think that's so exciting, I want to be a part of that. Right. But yeah, you, you don't, don't know, know what, what was actually... You don't know what goes along with it, right? Yeah. Tino, jump in. All right, I'll be real though, yeah? Mostly when I consume something, I don't care what sexuality the clothes are, because I wear what I want, and I don't care about what religion is. Do you know what I'm saying? So I feel like even just hearing you lot talk, it's like religion, sexuality, and that. some people's brother, like, because obviously we know what sexuality my man is, isn't it? So he's obviously going to cater to that and press that more. 
and we live in that era now, like where mm. obviously gay pride is, 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 is big now, do you know what mm. I mean? Like our country's got different genders and that, so the fact that he's got such a broad range of clothes that can fit with any sex, right. is like, I, just, I just think it's, can't really be sick of it, innit? It's just, if you rock it, you rock it. I mean, yeah, I think... You feel me? Like, in a yeah, polite way, though, you feel me? Yeah, 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 as in, like, people don't really understand what's yeah, like, the clothes that they're wearing as well, yeah, and like, sort of... Because there's different designers. And, like, yeah. Yeah. A lot of people just take stuff at face value, right? Yeah, like... It looks, but yeah. I guess it's just if it's... Because when it comes to clothes, when something's Look. in the shop, most people don't think behind that product. They're not thinking, oh, a gay man's <laughs> designing yeah. this. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. He's wearing women's clothes there. I think we live in an age where everything yeah. is kind of mixed together in the yeah. sense of visual culture and fashion. Mm -hmm. So you have all these different aesthetics. Some are cultural, some are just based on music or whatever it may be. And they're mixed together. Mm -hmm. And there's everything, people are viewing it all from the same point. So nothing, there's no kind of perspective on that. Mm -hmm. Right, I agree. Yeah. I think though, but when you still do have to take on inspiration from other cultures or wherever that may be, whether that's music music or past fashion eras, there still needs to be an element of respect. Yeah, there for needs sure. to be research that's done into that so that if you choose to take on those attributes of that particular concept, mm. that it is done respectfully because... Yeah, like appreciation rather exactly. than appropriation. Exactly. But I always find that this there's a kind of sometimes the kind of respectfully approach is just as patronizing or as the more kind so. of direct, yeah. Yeah. I love this shit, so I'm going to throw yeah. it in. I think yeah. it depends on the viewpoint. It I mean, if thing. you genuinely are an ally to that cause behind it, it's going to show in the work. But if you're, I think it comes very see-free when somebody just wants to do it just for the clothes. For sure. Whereas some, I know a lot of designers who will work with the people of that culture to bring it to the forefront instead. So it's more of a conversation of how to do that in a way in this day yeah. and age. Um, well, I think, I mean, the show's happening right now, so let's, let's dive in. I immediately, from looking at the white walls and this very modern setup, was quite surprised, uh, even seeing so much white coming out here at the beginning. Um, you know, it's got the kind of modernist appeal of a Tom, Tom Ford or, a, or even the kind of Balenciaga down the escalators type of thing. Very different to the kind of, like, Baroque, you know, Lush. carpeted, yeah, velvet, uh, jewels. velvet, exactly, yeah, yeah. of of before, um, and certainly the last collection that um, Alessandro presented was a bit more, quote unquote, edgy and uh, aggressive, um, with spikes and masks and stuff like that. So, um, you know, what what do we think he's trying to do here with this kind of clinical opening? I th I, I think he's bordering on the on the Louis Vuitton here, to be completely honest. I think I think I think I think he's pr pretty close, man. Right. The Virgil collection. Yeah. yeah. Super yeah, close, <laughs> right? Super close. It's cold though. It's like futuristic and that. It's got yeah. like that kind of modern feel to it because right. like, I feel like all the brands, all the brands kind of feed off each other. Like look when Balenciaga yeah. come up with a chunky kind of vibe, right. and you've got a whole yeah, set of people yeah, just a low banging more. out yeah, the. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's fashion, so it's the industry. It's small, so people are gonna feed off other people's. Like, yeah because they're going to try and get their own version and compete. It's just competition, mm -hmm. do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But it's, it's the sport and it? it's fashion. So you've got yeah. to respect that. <laughs> yeah. My only problem with the show really was they had this kind of dramatic entrance and then I was expecting the next part to be really different, dramatic mm -hmm. and like a wow moment, but then it was just the silly, nerdy yeah. models. Yeah. So I don't know. No shade, no shade. It wasn't quite dramatic, but... I'm get, I was getting a little bit of the kind of uh, midsummer kind of uh, cultish uh, attitude at the beginning as well. Okay, so here's where it kind of livens up and goes into something that's a bit more uh, recognisably well, yeah, exactly. Andrew McKelly. Kind of back to what he knows a little bit here, right? I feel like he, the other mo models kind of like disappeared into the into the back of my head though. Once these ones popped up, yeah, exactly. Up. Do you yeah, know what I mean? it's like I don't know. They yeah. just come out like pawns. Like yeah, it yeah. Doesn't, it doesn't have much of a connection, and I think that pointless basically. Yeah. Back to designers coming off other designers, the moving walkway is just like that Kim Jones Dior show, but totally outside of designers copying each other. I think the clinical introduction, mm. the vibe I'm getting from that is just the overstimulation, the oversaturation of everything, and the designer is trying to speak on that, and it's like a restart. It's well, like, I was like wondering, maybe he was like trying to troll a little bit, because people are always like referencing the past and referencing the Tom Ford era. 
and how much of a difference it is. So maybe it was just like to make everyone think that was going to be the full try. I don't know, I don't, maybe in like sort of, because nowadays with social media, it's kind of like the memes that pop off and stuff. So right. I was wondering if it's like a troll moment in a way. Well, I, I, I see it as though he's sort of boxed himself into a particular aesthetic and he's only got one way to kind of surprise people, which is to... Um, is do that, right? Is to is tone to, it right down. To do that. And in a way, that's almost the expected thing to do if yeah. he wanted to surprise people. Um, but, I mean, having a look at the clothes themselves, can we go back to the, the current show? Um, in terms of the styling, it seems slightly more pared down. It's obviously it's still pretty mm -hmm. glam, um, but you know a lot of the dresses are a lot more tailored. It's mm -hmm. a lot. It feels a lot slicker and less um, kind of kitsch, I suppose. For sure. Mm. Are there any pieces that are popping out to anyone in particular? Mm -hmm. I like the suits. I feel like. That's Dapper Dan inspiration all yeah, over. Right. Jack, I don't care what stuff. anyone says. <laughs> That's my man. But this is what I'm trying to say. So where I feel like there should be some credit his way more than he's had. He's been through a lot. Well, my feeling is that he should be the creative director of Gucci. 100%. I was, I was trying to say it. Like, I wasn't trying to just kind of throw it out there. So, but yeah, that's, that popped up to me. What about you? I was going to say, like, it almost nothing really stands out. And that's yeah. the sense I've been seeing from all the Spring Summer mm. 20 collections, uh -huh. is that they're all going for a very minimal approach. Yeah. But it's not this kind of crisp, clean minimalism that you saw from yeah. designers in the late 90s. It's like, OK, we've been over. Everything has just been overdone. We need to, like, take a step back. Yeah, for sure. But I wonder, in terms of sales, how that's just going to speak to customers. Because I think more so than people want things to calm down, people still want something that feels special. And I think when everything, it's hard to, I mean, this is just the runway video, it's moving very fast, but it's hard to see things that feel special. Mm -hmm. And I feel like they're just trying to tone it down and take a step back. And that's the message they're going across with. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I think it's almost like maybe that everybody's taking a season to sort of potentially redress the balance slightly and, and, and reevaluate and reassess and, uh, um, uh, uh, and to an extent potentially sacrificing a season to, to, yeah, to, to start again, to do something, you know? I think I see it in a little bit of a different way. For me, I feel like there was a concept though, maybe it just hasn't came out the way they wanted it to. I think the whole idea was maybe having this whole set and making people think it was going to be this sort of show and then to shock everybody. But then maybe the clothes were a little bit of an afterthought and they're not actually, I mean, they're kind of toned down versions of what we've seen before. In the past, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Very. So I don't know whether it's just like they had this, because I can kind of see the concept, I can. So yeah. I don't know whether it's that and it just hasn't really played out to the way I think that's, wanted. I think that's fair to say. I think maybe you're being a bit more generous and we're probably being quite sceptical. <laughs> <laughs> I am that, yeah. But, but, I, but, I, think, but I, think that's, I think that's it, right? I think it's a bit of both. Oh. Does the show have a name? Yeah, I was going to say, do we, do we have access to press notes at all. We may not. I'm told that there's only one uh, camera at the show, so we're a little lacking on kind of zooming into buttonholes and um, seams and things like that. Um, is this it? Look at that. New forms of subjectification. Um, I would have said Scooby-Doo or something. You know, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, goodness. So we're talking about Foucault now. Unbelievable. So, um, I mean, without, without sort of wanting to just read this out to everyone, because that would be incredibly boring, um, we're looking very much at the language of postmodern theory here. And Foucault is brought yeah. up. We're looking a lot at power. Um, and I wanted to bring postmodernism in because I think that's very important in what Gucci does. And in this idea we've talked about of sort of scouring through the past, picking up whatever we kind of fancy, like um, cultural magpies, and just kind of throwing it all together. Um, what, you know, what are the kind of issues with that, that sort of postmodern, I guess, approach to fashion? Because we, we, we see it in other places as well. I mean, certainly like Vetmon's approach. Mm -hmm. um, has all of those kind of hallmarks as well. Um, is this a kind of moment of just complete disillusionment? No, no, kind of, no kind of faith in the future enough to carve out a brand new idea? Are we just looking backwards and scouring the past? Is that all we have left? I don't necessarily think there's anything wrong with a bit of nostalgia and looking to the past for inspiration. But I think 
if if that's done continuously, season after season, then after a while, things do turn to be a little bit lacklustre in the same way that I'm kind of looking at this new collection and I thought it would be a lot more punchy than it actually is. I thought mm. that... It's a bit tame. Exactly. Mm. Starting off instantly, the kind of like the set with the whole kind of like conveyor belt and it's all very clinical is, very, is kind of like a direct contrast to the previous resort collection, which was very dark and it meant that the, mm. like the customers, not the customers, the viewers in the show were kind of like as part of the show where they had the flashlights and they had to essentially light the subjects. And I really liked that kind of idea where the viewer is part of mm. the show, whereas mm. this feels like a complete... Like an immersive thing. Exactly, yeah. whereas this is completely different. It's very bright, it's very clinical, it's kind of completely in your face. But I don't think the clothes are essentially up to par, whereas this, yeah, this, it, this is great, mm, you know, mm. like if you had a flashlight, it means that you can focus on the aspect of the clothes that you wanted to see. And there are so many different kind of dimensions to these clothes, whereas the latest collection doesn't do that for me, unfortunately. Yeah. So you got to roll around with a flashlight. Well, let me see that. <laughs> <laughs> no. Are they both not kind of fashion cliches? I mean, doing, you know, a show in a dark room in a church and doing a show in a white clinical room with a conveyor belt. Yeah, definitely. Are, very all, cool. are we just dealing with a kind Com of com surfeit of cliches? Yeah, completely. But like kind of what isn't, right? You're kind of damned if you do, damned if you don't, right? Whatever you do, it, it can be... You know, it's really, I think it's super, super, it's basically impossible to do something original now, right? So uh, everyone's, everyone's... Tino's shaking his head. Is it impossible to do something original? <laughs> Are you... I respect, I think... The man, the man with the plan, man. No, I'm not, yeah, because... You have to tell me, you have to teach me. No, I, the best way to see it is, like, sometimes you, yeah, I understand referencing backwards, but, like, you will get the odd one out of the hundred that will yeah, come with something yeah. different. Because, like, I feel like vitamins are very brave. Like, to be honest, to go and get a McDonald's hat and then <laughs> your own version, <laughs> yeah? Knowing how, like, do you know what I mean? And just yeah. make it, flip it from mm -hmm. such a low-budget thing to a high-budget thing. Like, that's brave. That's the bravest I've yeah. seen. Because I would never buy that in a million years. You can kind of argue, though, but after a while, that loses its shot. And then that becomes a cliche, right? What? That becomes I mean, one of these like fashion cliches. Of it. That, yeah. Yeah, Everyone so, can get tired of everything. So what do you think, though? So what, do you think they're trying to get hot, get money and then just stop there and just be comfortable? Or do you actually think these designers a care? Yeah. Yeah. Like you're a, you're yeah. a Vetmons fan, yeah. right? I'm quite Step a fan of He was there. Vetmont. Yeah, I was at this show, actually. <laughs> and uh, I think this show very much just speaks on what I was saying with the Gucci show. It's the over... You're overwhelmed by everything. In this fashion industry, you're seeing everything. You're seeing... No one is getting any sort of inspiration because they're all looking at each other. You're trapped in this bubble. Mm. Everyone is trapped in a bubble, and it's such an echo chamber. There's no sense of, like, outside dialogue. Mm. So Vetmont is kind of just saying, fuck it. Like, they're like, okay, like, everything sucks. Let's burn it down. Like, mm. it's looking like last, in the last place yeah. you think to look, right? Yeah, and this is, like, to me, that collection feels like the greatest hits of the fashion industry because the fashion industry is fucked. Like that's that's the point I feel like they're going. I mean, it does it does very much feel culturally in general. We're at a bit of a, a dead end. I mm -hmm. feel like there's 100%. a general cultural malaise. There's a general social political malaise where no one seems to be offering real solutions to and real anything. problems. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, uh, there's well, a lot well. of there's a lot of anger and frustration in the world and desire for new ideas, new ideology, new you know leaders, thought leaders. Uh, and representatives, and yet we're kind of stuck on the same left-wing, right-wing kind of dichotomy. Fashion gamers. The mm. fashion gamers. I don't think the music game is, because the music, I think, is a big factor. In, I think music and fashion are hand in hand. Like, you've got to think of Kanye West, Fug. Like, right. Pharrell. Like, mm. They're like leaders within music. I agree with Kanye. I don't agree yeah. with Pharrell right now. Well, well, you know what it is, but the thing is, you've got to understand the heat he has behind things, and he's an innovator. He still creates. So he's still got that power and that leverage to come into a game that has minimal ideas, as you say, mm -hmm. and give it something that another crowd that a higher fashion market won't look at and bring all that fan base into it again. So you're going to do sales, you're going to do this, you're going to do that. Do you understand? So that's, that's the new wave. From thinking you, thinking then of this particular Gucci collection, mm -hmm. what... Is it going to be the same musicians that wear this collection that we've seen already wear it? ASAP Rocky's a big fan. Jared Leto is a big fan. Yeah. Will it, uh, it's, uh, what's her name? For Florence and the Machine mm -hmm. loves it. Will it be the Sounds same? 
group of celebrities, or do you think this will introduce oh, new, always new customers? Talent. Yeah, there's always new talent, though. There's always new artists coming up. There's always new designers. People get famous yeah, so quickly, yeah. don't they? Yeah, so. some of them have, some yeah. of them have longevity, some don't. It's like a one-hit wonder on someone who's got ten songs. It's like a designer that brings out a collection that sells a million times, don't sell again. Do you so, think, do yeah. you think, going back to what you're yeah. saying, though, do you think it's easier to be original? It's, it's a weird thing to say, but do you reckon it's easier, easier to be original in music than it is to be in fashion? Yeah, 100%. I agree with that as well. Does everyone agree with that? Yeah, because you might, think something, you might think something in your head and you can divulge that onto a mic and you might have an idea with fashion. Like a sound. You, you might not physically. Yeah, yeah, sound, sound yeah. And, and feel are two different things. But is, the, is, the, is, the path, is the path in music from idea to end product quicker and maybe slightly more simple than the path in fashion yeah. from idea to end product? Well, I think, uh, I think you could argue both ways, right? The, but yeah, I suppose you the could key, argue both ways, for well, sure. The key yeah. thing I would say about fashion is it's probably the only creative industry that is growing at the moment. And music, film, they're all really in decline. And fashion has grown 5% year on year for decades. Yeah. It's a massive industry that mm -hmm. relies on exploiting cheap third world labor, which is something the music industry doesn't do. The music the, industry the exploits extent. other things, too. Mm. Um, yeah, so uh, I think that the kind of pace and the aggressiveness of the commercialism in fashion means that it, it, can, it can get stuck in that way. Mm. It can eat itself. I don't yeah. think you it see that in music itself. too, though. Yeah. I mean, there's definitely a commercial, like, a commercial side of music where they take just someone who they know that they can mm. put what you need to make a pop star and yeah. then put it out, like this mm -hmm. Taylor Swift. Like, but I suppose they're not generally relying on Bangladeshi workers paid yeah. a pittance That's to true. create <laughs> their product at the end of the day. Yeah. Um, that is something I wanted to bring up in terms of discussing luxury brands because I always feel like it's um, missed out of the discussion. Um, as much as uh, people will sort of hate on this wave of fast fashion as a, as a big polluter, um, Luxury is, is just as culpable. Just as Agreed. Uh, and luxury, the luxury industry has done a very good job of sort of covering its tracks yeah. when it comes mm -hmm. to um, exploiting labor in the third world and um, polluting the world. Um, so I wanted to touch a bit on this idea of, 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 of made in Italy um, because this is something that is not always um, something that brands are completely honest about. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, a lot of this product is created in China and created and in put places the label like Bangladesh. Or, it's it's in or, yeah. I was actually just in Italy and someone told me in Italy, you know, you have the factories where it's like old Italian people working, they're getting paid well, that's one thing. Then you have these other factories in Italy that are a foreign contractor bringing in all these employees. It's like they get to stay there, they get to live in Italy, they don't get paid, they get exploited. Mm -hmm and the stuff is made at a lo much lower standard, the employees are treated horribly, like, this is going on in Italy, mm -hmm. and they can yep. just say, there's no loophole they have to go through, it's made in Italy. So, in, but, in Prato, in Tuscany, which is very near where Gucci was founded, this is a, this is a huge issue um, with the, it's this mass importation of cheap Chinese labor yeah, into that particular yep. town. Um, and so this is how they can keep the kind of made in Italy brand alive. Um, but I'm just wondering whether, you know, millennial customers who are engaging with this in so, at, on social media, which is where Gucci has done incredibly well under uh, Alessandro Michele, do those customers care about labor supply chain? Do they care about the environmental impact of what they're doing? No. No. Honest, no. It's, it's really sad to say, but I honestly think when people buy a brand, depending on the demographic that's buying it, um, particularly kind of like the social media generation, I honestly don't think that they're too bothered about what's happened in terms of how this product has come to them and how it's made and who has made it and whether that person is paid fairly. I don't think that's something... I think, unfortunately, the fashion industry is becoming so elitist, or more so it has always been, but this is something that continues to grow and people would rather just say, I've got the newest Gucci, mm -hmm. as opposed to being like, this was made by a small child or someone who wasn't fed properly. They're not going to care about that. They just want to know that they can post that image of that great jacket and that's going to get them the likes and the no, gratitude that they want. It's like a no pain, no gain industry, isn't it? It's like someone's yeah. going to go through something. Mm -hmm. But that's just the game. I don't think we can even debate it. it like, we're always going to be outnumbered, no matter what opinion you have. Can have yeah. the best idea in the world. There's going to be someone that's going to hate it. 
what do I mean, and, and think otherwise. Well, this is the thing. This is the game, is isn't it, of global yeah. capitalism? This is how this system yeah. works. Yeah, so well, they're claiming to be right. carbon neutral now, which <laughs> I hope is true. But when I think about it, like logically, yeah. I don't really understand how such a massive brand, especially one that uses so much embellishment, so many trimmings, so many feathers, how that's a very unsustainable, that very unsustainable item. So I don't really understand. Is it really possible to be completely carbon neutral? Well, car carbon neutral is very, very different it's to um, actually well. reducing your emissions. I know, but so, I just still don't understand how it could be fully. So it's, it's somewhat easier for corporations to offset their, their carbon. It's a lot more difficult for them to really interrogate their supply chain and bring emissions. That's what I mean, as in like, it's so, so easy to like credit, say that you're because... something and then right. it's not quite the honest truth, but it sounds good. You know? so, so is this just a, is that a marketing ploy? Oh, quite, yeah, pretty, yeah. Yeah. I yeah. would imagine so. But it's not the worst one. The <laughs> what's the what's the worst one? <laughs> I think just in general, like brands uh, marketing to all sorts of social causes currently is just very false, and it's they they can care, but they obviously only care because that's the conversation they want to feel empowered by. That's the conver like Gucci can say all this stuff about whatever activism they're doing, and. I don't doubt that it's genuine because I'm sure there's people at that company who care very much about those things, but it's only happening because that's something they want to market to. They want those people who are those sorts of things to buy their products. Yeah. Simply what it is. Like you agree, Zainab? That literally was mm -hmm. that kind of follows on to um, how Gucci have now, since appointing Renee Torado as the chief of diversity, mm -hmm. they've now kind of brought up these new kind of like um, programs and different kind of like organizations and things that they're going to do to become more inclusive and yeah. is that something that is authentic or does that only happen because you've received so much backlash yeah. about I not including people return to what she just said because that was a very good point mm. uh i think that they're only doing this like fuck my like I lost my train of thought. Like, uh, <laughs> I'll jump in. Come back, yeah. come back. I think it's important to also talk about what its system the, we're talking about being included in. We talk mm -hmm. a lot about inclusion, but actually sometimes there are the, the kind of way that the system is rigged right now is not a system we want to be necessarily included in. And actually yeah. staying outside of that and creating new systems is, yeah. is maybe more important. I remembered what I want to say. It's just a quick point. They're like, even if they're doing it genuinely, they're only doing it now because the pressure is on them. Let's say if this wasn't the dialogue that was happening right yeah, now, they if they be weren't being it. told to do this, would they do it? No. Yeah. Mm. Who knows? Not if, you know. no, not, if it, not if it was a way to save money. The other thing that I want to say as well, regardless of the, the brand itself adhering to this uh, certain set of ethics, say it's environmental or race awareness or something like that, I would also question whether the customer who is potentially aligning themselves with a with a movement or with a is re is really if they're truly aligned with that cause or that or that or that yeah, set of ethics, whether they'd be buying something from Gucci anyway. I don't I don't really I don't really imagine like a, a, a yeah. true environmental activist is going to the Gucci store and buying, you know, a thousand pound shirt, right? right? So there's a there's a there's a real sliding scale. Every, the world aligns itself with with yeah. individuals like people. we do. Everyone does, right? Yeah. You can say you don't, but you probably do, right? You, 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 there's a genuine interest in it, but if you're existing in mainstream society, your ability to be a hardline activist on anything is probably not is, is not. You know, you've got to kind of you've got to kind of live a certain lifestyle and live outside of the bounds of regular society mm -hmm. to be mm -hmm. to really commit to kind of any cause, right? Mm -hmm. So. I think it's all kind of a bit hazy. It's like the Starbucks coffee that builds in a kind of, um, you know, charity donation into the price of their cup of coffee. I mean, they're the problem, and that is only really there to make people feel better about their yeah. purchase. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's my kind of cynical take on things. There's probably a much more um, po positive take on that. Um, dynamic and I'm sure like you said a lot of people who are in the industry are very well intentioned but the yeah. system is is a bit rotten mm -hmm. life isn't it? it's a big uh, a big dose of uh, ignorance is bliss just, right I just, Go on, Tina. No, I just said it's life I just one line is <laughs> it's life the intention can be there it's just about the execution mm -hmm. uh, I like Tino it. says that's life it is life 
Yeah, I agree. With it's, like, it's like saying I don't want poverty no more. <laughs> it's yeah. not gonna happen, is it? There's poverty everywhere. It's what it is, and there's royalty. It is what it is. So is it then a bit disingenuous for, for brands to, to, to campaign as if these are the issues they care about? No, I don't think so. I think if it's, it's all well and good wanting to campaign and wanting to advocate for issues. And raise if, awareness. And raise awareness yeah. if it is genuine. But then it's also the flip side of that is how can you ever really know if they are being genuine it about not, yeah. it? Because the fact that they're even doing it and they're taking steps in that direction is a good thing and it is going to raise awareness. So but then, like you, but then like you say, if it isn't genuine and it's raising awareness anyway, mm -hmm. Then kind of the end result's the end result, right? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's good. It's good you actually touched on that because there's designers that don't care about like fur and all that, but they all did. Remember that little that little period where they was all doing like a non-leather show mm -hmm. or like a non-fur show. Right. <laughs> but it's exactly what you just that said. That is bro. very true. About it's exactly what you like just said. Trends sometimes. Yeah, hundred yeah. yeah. percent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like some designers, like people will care for a little bit, and then in a few seasons, everyone's forgotten about but then it. Then is that still positive, irrespective of whether it's a no. trend or not? If people forget no, about it, then it's not. Ungenuine, like you said. So I should say that um, Gucci has come out and said it's fur-free. Um, it's interested in conserving forests around the world. It's carbon neutral. <laughs> it has signed up to the UNICEF Girls Empowerment Initiative. Um, and so these are all the kinds of steps that it is taking as part of this campaign called Gucci Equilibrium, uh, which comes with some very uh, verbose language on their website, if you're interested in reading. Um, yeah, he didn't but, you know, this is a core part of how they reach out to young people today. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, I mean, I don't think he set that up, personally. You don't think it's Alessandro's <laughs> initiative? <laughs> I think someone done it and just said, yo, it's like, bro, like, you're going to lose, <laughs> you're gonna lose a mission. big check yeah. over this one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying. Yeah. So, to say this, yeah, I mean... But all that stuff's quite cool, though, all that stuff's quite cool it? now, right? Yeah. I think young people would view that as cool, an, an association with with that cause or with that, so, uh, pe people would view that as a positive, as like a cool thing, right? About 60 year olds. Well, uh, yeah, all them, right? But, yeah. you know, their consumer would view that as like a cool thing. I don't, I don't know if it's, mm. you know, kind of mm. either way, whether, whether it's genuine or not genuine or whatever, their customer thinks it's cool. And they obviously are, they have, they have to be seen to be investing money into these causes. They can't just align themselves and do nothing. So, no, of course not. Kind I do of. think in a sense that it is better to do something within the fashion brands though, rather than, because I know a lot of people want to just cancel things, but I think the problem with just cancelling things is that in the future, history repeats itself. If you just cancel something and move on, I mean, it happens again in time because you don't actually learn from it. So maybe it's better that it's coming from the brands rather than being like, we just can't do this anymore, we can't do this, but rather finding a better way to do things. Well, what I think is particularly interesting, again, going back to this idea of postmodernism, um, is that I guess Gucci's vision disposes of this kind of teleological idea of time and progress and this kind of inevitable sense of a kind of revolution around the corner, which is what kind of modernism was all about and what Tom Ford was about, was this onward march for progress. Um, Postmodernism is about just kind of throwing it all up in the air and just seeing what sticks. Um, and so that, that's where I sort of worry that we're maybe not learning lessons yeah. from history, is I because think that's it a all thing. kind of just goes into a big mishmash yeah because people i mean i don't know i don't want to be so negative i want to like believe that it can be like change and stuff but it has just happened through time that people care for a little bit everyone forgets it happens again yeah. we get desperate again we all talk about it again mm. do you know what i mean well, well certainly so. in terms of like diversity i think there's been a big push for diversity on the runway um, but in the real positions of power, this is still a big issue. Mm -hmm. For example, Dapper Dan is not the one who's helming Gucci, but there will be um, faces that are of different colors than usual on the runway to sell the clothes. Um, is that still effective? Is there a bigger structural problem there? It depends if it's done just to meet a quota, mm. because it's all good and well saying that you want to be diverse and but you want to implement that diversity and inclusivity throughout the whole fashion industry and more so Gucci. But if you're only putting in, if there's a lineup of maybe like say 96 looks and you have four black girls, is that really that diverse? Are you only doing that because you now want to be able to check that box and say, okay, we are being inclusive. 
it's, it's a hard one because it's, it's about whether it is genuine and whether you actually, they, the brand actually means to change and move on and get ahead of the times. And also, I think if you're going to invest in somebody who's going to come on as like a head of diversity or whatever, what, what, what you're mentioning where you say there's four black girls in the show or whatever, um, surely, I think, obviously, with what Gucci's done, they, they've offended specifically the black community. But if you're, if you're investing in, in inclusivity, that should be global, right? Exactly. That should be Asian people, yeah, you know. 100%. People, uh, so does Gucci's, uh, as we look over the images that have come in now, um, what do we think of the casting? I'll throw that open. I always think of Gucci, the range of body types isn't quite there. Because they're all about making kind of powerful women, and it's kind of like, well, you need all types of women. Yeah, for sure. To have powerful women, because all types of women are powerful. I've always, I've, I have a bit of an issue with that particular line of argument, which is probably going to get me into a bit of trouble. <laughs> but um, my aunt w w was in fashion school, and she's a very skinny woman, and was always told that she, they, they, they wouldn't put the clothes on her because she wasn't a real woman. And I've seen, I've seen both sides of this kind See, of I argument. I do think that is terrible, and I totally agree with you there. I don't think a way of going forward is bashing the other side. I totally agree with that. But that's what I mean, there needs to be all type of women. It's not about, oh, no more skinny girls. I don't think that at all. I actually know a lot of skinny girls who were quite bullied for being skinny when mm. they were younger. It, mm. I mean, anyone who's different is usually bullied in some sort of way. But that's why right. we need a diverse mm -hmm. range of everybody. Um, and looking, looking at this particular cast of models, how do, we, how do we react? I mean, in terms of maybe getting away from the diversity issue, and just does, do, does this cast of people tell a story about the Gucci customer that we are interested in? No. Doesn't, it doesn't feel... No, like, Tino says no. Yeah, no, I'm with Tino. It doesn't feel, it doesn't feel like there's much of a, a story being told through the people that are walking in the show. So that's what you're used to seeing, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah so textbook, 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 obvious. textbook, textbook <laughs> supermodel right. territory, right? I feel like fashion, full stop, though, would be way more successful if, like, exactly what you said. I can't, so, how do I say I know. I know, so, I know. <laughs> Yeah, exactly what you, you know, said. You know, you're at. <laughs> I'm just a bit high. But yeah, um, variety in, like, body types and, like, different cultures, well, that's always important, man. Is, don't you think sometimes a brand has to sell a particular message sometimes, mm -hmm. whether it's Grace Wells Bonner doing a full cast he's of not. black models or whether a black designer wants to put a show of mm. all white models who all have this very particular look? Mm. Isn't that still an important kind of uh, idea for, yeah, for if a, a designer? Done, if you've done yeah. it a million times, I'm sure you can switch it up. Right. I see both That's arguments. Yeah, right. yeah. Uh, I think that with every brand, it's never the actual customer that's on the runway. It's like, yeah, even if you right. had a very diverse <laughs> cast of bodies on the runway, I guarantee you those people are still gonna look better than the customer buying the product. Like, pe most of the people buying fashion are not the most glamorous people. And the brands know that, and the people buying it know that because they buy fashion right. to feel oh, yeah. something more. Mm -hmm. right. To feel like they're part of something yeah, that's, that's higher than them. And they can yeah. afford it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, sometimes it's just a label. In that yeah. sense. But the label gives them that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Whereas, like the street brands now and the underground brands, they're doing that. They're doing what you're talking about. They're flipping up the model image and that, and they're, do you know what I mean? Involving. Um, culture I think and all that. at the same time, depending on what your casting is, I think that should then also tell a story. I think if your casting is consistently the same, where it's just like a skinny white girl, I think you're instantly cutting out a demographic that can envision themselves in those clothes. Mm -hmm. When I look at a fashion show, I want to potentially see myself as that person. And I think if you only have the same tone of people walking those, yeah, those runways, to to, right? it's so difficult to relate mm -hmm. to. You're not going to think, oh, I could be that black girl. I've seen a black girl. I feel like part of that is um, a bit of the kind of narcissism of this generation, that they're really desperate to see themselves in clothes and I always imagine fashion as a place of escape of fantasy where I can imagine something mm. completely different yeah. um, and so that's where I think that particular line of thought starts to get a little tricky mm -hmm. not not to discount the historical injustices within the fashion industry yeah um, 
but I think it's, it should be more about putting these people into positions of power rather than necessarily models who have absolutely no say over the direction of luxury brands. Yeah, you feel like it should be the, the upper echelons that, that actually be, need the change, yeah. There'll be, le there'll be way less models. There wouldn't really be models then. There'll just be icons. But the thing is, there are a lot of girls of Which different cool. types that are model material. Mm -hmm. I, I don't mean just take someone who looks exactly like me and put them on the runway. I mean, they, they, I still do want them to look like a model, but other types of girls can. Mm -hmm. They do still look like models. Mm -hmm. Like You see them, they're beautiful, like, do you know what I mean? So they can sell the fantasy too. So um, I guess uh, Midland Agency are uh, sort of involved with uh, a lot of the Gucci casting, and they're one of these uh, recent, very trendy casting agencies headed up by Walter Pierce, who uh, learnt the ropes at my favourite brand, Hood by Air. Uh, and um, they have been very um, instrumental in kind of crafting this particular Gucci look. Yeah, Shane, you're serious. Though. That was like the first brand I modelled for. Oh, really? So I'm with you on that one. Nice. Good one. I'm with you on that. Story. I always find a way of bringing it back to her by air. No, they're cool. You, gotta, you, gotta. <laughs> you have to. No, no, they're, they're serious. I think, they, you know what it is with them? They, exactly, again, that, that diversity, they got that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like V-files and all them lot, them. But that was also pretty authentic, right? Yeah, Hood Buyer was so I mean, authentic. Natural, really. It was not like any of these other brands. Like, oh, yeah. And it wasn't, they weren't doing it to be diverse. They were doing it because that was them. Oh. Like, they were so, yeah, 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 they yeah. were being themselves. Yeah, that was you kind know? Of and I think right? that's always important to be yourself. Oh. Like, you can't let someone tell yeah. you how to be. Like, if a designer isn't fulfilling yeah. their full vision, like, yeah. it's kind of bullshit. They're the first ones like, I Hood saw. Like, Hood Buyer was top of the line, they're they're the, so good. They're the first ones I saw kind of like mix the sexuality too, because they, mm. I got scouted on the Oxford Street for that show, and it was the next day. And I was just like, so fascinated by like, Boy Child was there, right. um, yeah. like Jimmy Q, like me, there was like other people, and it was just, we're all different people. None of mm. us are, we're all our own. Mm. And they do that, they embrace but then that. That's, but then, but then oh. I think that's cast, casting individuals rather than trying to hit, yeah. hit quotas, right? Yeah, yeah, so yeah like exactly. We need five black people, we need yeah, six yeah. white people, we need four Asian people, do you know what I mean? It, it's, yeah. they're, 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 and I think, that's, I think that's the way to do it, and then that way this communicates serious. ten times more of a that's story, serious, right? Oh, genius. No, they're Sorry. serious. <laughs> but yeah. I think because that it, show was... Yeah, I was I, I, I'm, always, I'm always reminded of this um, quote that Telfar had in um, New York Magazine about um, how a lot of people in the general fashion press refer to Telfar's casting as inclusive. And he rejects that because there's a kind of built-in narrative of white supremacy within that context. Actually, the Telfar show is incredibly exclusive. It's just his friends. There is nothing inclusive about a Telfar yeah. show. Um, so I think that's where the kind of language around this stuff starts to get a little yeah. muddy. Yeah, cool. um, but there we go. Yeah, that was serious. Um, all that aside, there's no doubt that Alessandro Michelli has um, created a, a look, a lasting chapter in Gucci's mm. history, yeah, sure. something that is instantly identifiable, something that people are desperate to buy. Um, Ending on a positive note here, um, you know, what, what kind of elements of, of that fantasy are we inspired by? Sex. Sex. Mm. But I think it's not as sexy as Tom Ford, that's yeah, the thing. It's I think more it's, nerdy. It's, it's it could like be sexier. Freeway, Get your though. pubes out, I reckon. That's what I've always found of him. It's like sexy yeah, that, in a freeway, like yeah. in his past collections where it's been like, it looks like what you just wear to the party and like go out and it is sexy and in that way. Fun. And it's sort of like Paris right. clubs. Yeah, for sure. The nostalgia, you well, know, Tom, and that Tom, is sexy. Well, yeah, Tom Ford's quite, Tom Ford's quite, quite serious, right? It's quite. Now that's sexy. Yeah. yeah. I just, I just know it's quite serious. Different sexy. types of sexy. There's no, there's no, there's no irony there, right? That's, that's, that's meant to be that a is, sexual yeah, image, yeah. right? There's Surely no, there's I no, there's, no there's, there's nothing tongue in, tongue in hard. cheek. Is there? Yeah. And, and what I would say as well about that, the reason that imagery wouldn't work so well today is because largely the kind of luxury client is not from the kind of morally decadent yeah, 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 Western, yeah. Uh, it's not the same sure. Western European customer that's, sure. that, can, um, that is so sort of debauched that they're up for that kind of imagery. Yeah, that's yeah that, would, that would offend, right? It would. Yeah. Um, is that a man or a woman though? The, the, guy, the guy is looking, that's a guy. 
the well, one, the, an the, androgynous. The one stood up is a. I was going to say, yeah, the one, one stood up. Is down, is she's got her coochie out. Yeah. <laughs> coochie, coochie. Coochie, coochie. Coochie, coochie, coochie. Exactly. She's got her coochie out. Her Gucci coochie. <laughs> Um, I mean, I think that's a perfect image to end on, personally. Um, are there any final thoughts from my panellists before I wrap it up? Sex sells, guys. <laughs> Sex sells. Yeah. And that's it. Sex sells. There we go. Tino said it. Yes. Um, right, I've got to do Three another cells. one of these. <laughs> <laughs> I'm supposed to be really discreet about the fact that this is all set up, but there we go. Thank you to all the panellists. Thank you all for watching. For more extensive... Be sure to visit showstudio.com. And if you're watching my showstudio, be sure to like, comment and subscribe below. We'll see you next time.